Hey, Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV in Amsterdam for IBC 2019. We're about to go hit the floor, shake some hands, see some old friends, and just see what's new in the game. Hey, so I'm here at the Sigma booth with Brian, and you guys just put out a whole new line of what you're calling the Art Classic Series Cinema Lenses. Yep. Which, if I understand it correctly, is basically the character of vintage lenses, but built well and made for modern sensors today, right? Correct. So, you're going to get, you know, your flares and ghosting, uh, kind of like a lower contrast look to the lens, but it will maintain resolution. Um, idea is to give you the artistic ability, you know, we have our clean modern look, but we also provide you a look, you know, you want to shoot something that looks like it was shot in the 70s without, you know, somebody screwing the grade up in the end. You can yeah. bake it in, you can have that look right up front. Um, you have to shoot them a little bit more carefully because they ghost like in nobody's business, they flare like nobody's business, but they, uh, they're beautiful at the same but time. But they're more reliable than just like throwing dice at the wind with a vintage lens you might find out there somewhere. Yeah, so they're, you know, clean, modern optics, you know, modern mechanics, but uh, we've changed, so they're the same optical design as our, our regular Cine primes, our regular art primes, but we've changed the coatings on every single lens, so, or every single element to give, uh, you know, that kind of flare and ghosting. There's a lot of internal light bouncing around, um, that's caused us to lose a little bit of light transmission. Right. They go from like T1.5s to T2.5s in most cases, but you still maintain that, that f-stop value for your shallow depth of field. So you can still get this great, really vintage look. Yeah, because there's a lot of lenses that try to do that, but as you stop down, you tend to lose that character, right? Correct. So it, you know, T16 or T22, you're still going to get those kind of ghosting and flares. You just get everything in focus, or you can shoot it, uh, you know, super shallow and you know you get an eyelash in focus and available now uh we're not quite sure when availability is i would expect by the 2020 where we'll have them available they're going to be originally kind of a limited edition um it'll be sold in tens and sets so right. uh, pricing to be determined but uh definitely very cool look and feature out there right now yeah sigma's been thinking differently lately it's yeah. pretty interesting and you guys just put out something small with a really huge impact so yeah. we'll go take a look at that yeah let's go look at the fp okay cool yeah. So this little guy, the Sigma FP, made a huge, huge splash when people heard about it. It's the smallest full-frame mirrorless camera out there. We're talking about building it out to a full cinema, also 24 megapixel stills. This is a lot of camera in a little bit of space. Yeah, it's, it, the awesome thing here is, you know, you got this venting here, venting on the back. It's all been designed to be a, basically built around a heat sink so we can do uh, out to like a solid state drive. Um, we can do 4K Cinema DNG, 12-bit, so incredibly high quality raw footage. You can do it internally to an uh, SS, uh, an SD card. Yeah. Can't speak all of a sudden. <laughs> um, it's 8-bit internal for that, but I mean, you would expect a lower resolution to just be going to. A yeah, SS. but 12-bit raw video is no joke, especially yep. with full frame, not cropped, coming right out of the sensor. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it over here. I mean, that's your, that's your SSD. Yeah. You know, it's super small, you know, you're recording raw to that. You know, it's two terabytes right there. Totally built out, and of course, it's got the L-mount, because you're part of the L-mount alliance, yep. Panasonic, uh, Leica, Sigma. Yep, so the beauty of that, it's a mirrorless camera, so uh, you can adapt and throw anything you want on it. We just announced this guy right here, which is a PL adapter. Which so, is huge. Yep, goes right on. Um, so all your favorite cinema lenses that you've already worked with can go right onto this camera, totally. and this can literally fit in my pocket. Exactly. So you can throw a little camera on it. You can this setup here is for a director's viewfinder. So you can you can go into the camera and program what you're shooting. You know, you're shooting an Alexa Mini. It'll put the frame lines and give you that angle of view and everything. You know, just right there. So you have a. Can, can I just ask direction. what inspired this? Because it just seems like everybody's been trying to make just a box that's a sensor and you build out around it. Is that pretty much the idea? Yeah, modularity, yes. Yeah. So from a stills perspective, if you want to shoot stills on it, it's 24 megapixels. But you know, this is to be honest with you, it's not that comfortable. 
with this we have oh, it's like, meant to be built out yeah built out like this for cinema but even for stills we can just throw a little grip on here right. and give you a little bit gray you can put a hot shoe on top um, yeah I think anyone that owns this will never have the same setup as someone next to them that owns the camera exactly. as well one of the cool things is we're making the specs totally open source you can go you'll be able to soon go on our website and just download the you know, schematics for it so you can go home and 3d print something if you want for it that's amazing whatever. yeah so open source kind of idea I don't know Sigma we'll be we'll be we'll keep watching this little company yeah. I don't know maybe you're up to something good maybe now you guys are definitely thinking differently from the cinema lenses to this uh, little guy so it's and this and the element alliance is a pretty big deal as well it's, it's a big deal for us um, you know, working with Panasonic and Leica gives us, you know, kind of reach and name brand recognition beyond what we've done before. You know, being a mirrorless camera, it, it just opens the world of possibilities. Well, it, you guys can make anything and it already walks into a system full of lenses and possibilities rather than building us from start, which is yep. amazing. Yep, you know, and three companies working together, you know, I when the first Sony A7 came out, where they're at now and then, you know, when that first one came out, there was three lenses and that was, it was painful to sell. I used to work in a camera store at the time. So. <laughs> well, you're here now, and yeah. thank you for your time, man. This is amazing. Well, I can't wait to see what happens with this out in the field, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, it's awesome. Well, we'll try to maybe get you one so you can maybe do some interviews. Yeah, I'm holding him to that. Everyone write a comment. We're holding him to that, okay? All right, thank you so much, Brian. Thanks, Seth. Hey, so I'm at the Nanlite booth with Jeremy, and we covered you guys when we first saw the Forza series come out, which is like a monolight LED system. You guys are doing a lot of innovating things with LEDs. This, no, no, no different. The mixed panel 150 and the 60, but let's talk about the 150 first. Well, I like it because it's a very thin light, but it has a lot of punch, so it, it fits in small cases to travel with, but it gives you a lot of punch wherever you need, so you got a lot of different applications for them. It breaks down really small. Ah, here's the case that goes with it. Oh, so so trendy. Look. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What I like about it is you have this hard to soft functionality. So you have yes. specular, bigger diodes. Then the whole panel mixes together to make one giant panel, making yes. it a softer light source. Yeah, so you hit the CCT button and it goes in between hard and soft. And people like will probably think that's like a dimming feature, but it really isn't. It's actually changing the pattern of the light. Mm -hmm. The beam and the spread as well. So right. it really makes it a nice, because it even says on the back, so you have your boost, and then you do hard and soft. It says it on the corner, soft and hard. And, and then you it's know, because sometimes like, maybe you're using it as a, a rim light and you have it further away, you could do the hard and kind of reach that, you know, get that nice little curve right. on there. I mean, without throwing a modifier on it, you right. modify the light. Without changing the distance, you modify the light. Exactly. So you're doing a lot with it without even having to touch the light. Exactly. Uh, plus, it's an RGBW light, so you have built in gels and effects, right? Yes. yes. So, uh, how far are we going as far as power here? What are we looking at lux wise? Well, we're looking at 12,800 lux at one meter. Um, you know, that's, a, that's quite a bit for this size, but if you look at other lights in this space, the 150 is, it's 150 watts. Normally in this space, you're usually about 120 watts. Right. So that might sound like a, a stretch, but you're at 150, you're at the higher end of draw for this size, and with this dimension, it's just... Well, you guys also took the uh, design to another level when you have everything built into the back and there's no ballast on the cable. Right. So it's not like piece after piece with multiple cables. It's like yes. right here. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, and that's all you really need. I mean, at the end of the day, you, time is money. Yeah. So if you got all these other appendages you have to attach to make the light work, heck, you know, let's say you have six of these lights and you got to do a little ballast and all this other stuff, that takes time. But when you have one little piece that plug in wall you're good to go so I like that and you also have a uh, different speeds of the fan to limit the sound right so uh, you know what they do that for people that are very particular but honestly the sound you hear is on the back of the light in the front it's a whole different story yeah you have it on boost right now and I hear right. basically nothing which is incredible right. so right all right cool man well right. we're gonna keep an eye on Nan light like we did the first time we saw you guys yeah. uh, we're, we're pretty much fans of the tubes and the model lights, so we have to try this one out next uh, availability um, I'd say any day after the show. Okay. It should be on shelves, so I would say within the next 7, 14 days, if it's not already on shelves now. All right, cool, so, man. Thank you so much for your time. Got it, man. Be good, man.
So the Canon C500 Mark II just got announced and it's a modular system. I'm here with Paul and I was just wondering if you could just take me through what's so great about this modularity. Okay, it just makes it more usable to a wider range of, of customers. So in its basic form you've got a full frame 5.9K sensor recording cinema raw light internally right. uh, at twice the data rate as the C200 cinema raw light, um, which in that form for a single operator, documentary shooter, if they want to shoot RAW, they can. If they want to shoot non-RAW, they've got XFAVC at 42 10 bit at the same data rate as the C700 Mark II, so 810. If they need to add a little bit more connectivity, right. as opposed to anything else, then we have the two expansion units. Uh, yeah, you can start off small, yeah, but you can grow, out, grow a nice big kit yeah, out of it. So, exactly. So we're talking about multiple camera broadcasting, Ethernet uh -huh. capability. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So with the, the smaller module, you'll get Ethernet capability uh, on top of the, the existing connections. Uh, with the bigger module, you get an extra two XLR connections, okay. which will give you four independently controllable audio channels into the camera. Two on the camera, two on the expansion unit. So what I think is exciting is the interchangeable lens mount. Yep. Uh, it's a first for us. I mean, obviously, we've been able to get mounts changed normally within the um, within a workshop. These are user changeable ones. Um, it's a kit with a shim kit included. It's four bolts. Yeah, and you're so, good to go. And you're good to so go. You can use every piece of glass that you're already used to or into and you can yeah, put it onto this new absolutely. system. And the nice thing is that you put the PL mount on, your Cook Eye technology cable, right. you put the EF mount back on, your dual pixel AF capable without having to do anything else. So it's just the mount change. On the on the autofocus thing, I mean you know we've spoken in the past about people don't trust autofocus, yeah. they don't like to use it. What we've added on this is a system on the uh, autofocus that emulates the way a focus puller works. Okay. So it'll start off fast, it'll slow down as it reaches the focus point, and, settle and then in. settle in. Nice. So it's a really, again, controllable one. The advantage for that is if you're using it as a single shooter, you're wanting to shoot a, a cinematic style documentary, you can get a cinematic style look without having the crew. Yeah, you get that speed, but still yeah. the organic feel yeah, yeah, of yeah, a yeah, pull yeah, focus. Yeah, yeah, that's very much the intention. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we were excited when we heard the announcement, I jumped onto Adorama TV to tell people about it, but I'm going to get my buddy Paul to tell me about it, <laughs> like yeah. officially. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. No problem. All right, enjoy the rest of IBC. Uh, you. All right, so I'm at the Seagate La C booth with Christy, and uh, you got a couple of new products out that are pretty amazing. Lacey is a very trusted brand in memory, and usually, we, like, memory's not sexy, right? Like, it's kind of like, oh, I have to buy it, I need to archive my stuff, but there's plenty of features that make, one, a peace of mind, two, all the work you put into something worthwhile because it's safe, but these, these are really interesting. What are these? So, these are definitely sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so these are our brand new NVMe SSDs. So they actually use the Seagate Fire Cuda NVMe inside. Uh, there's two different flavors. This one's our new okay. rugged SSD. Yeah, okay. This guy is USB-C as the connection, so it gets you up to 1,000 megabytes per second. Okay. Um, SATA is pretty much at 540, so by NVMe inside, you're getting almost twice the speed. Um, the other really cool thing about this, definitely not sexy, but needed, is encryption. So yes. a lot of the, when you're developing your content, whether you have a client or whatever, and they want their project to know that that content's not gonna be you know, stolen or anything like that when it's in shuttle mode right. back and forth um, this one actually uses our um, Seagate secure which is self-encrypting technology and it's one of the first um, NVMe SSDs out there that actually have SED based encryption that's great the other really cool thing about this which I'm super excited to show you ready oh no no don't do it do it Boom. So, so IP67, right? So this guy here, pull it out, a meter? shake it off. IP67 is uh, one meter up to 30 minutes. 30 minutes. The way we actually test it is we actually pressurize water going straight into that connector to make sure that it's super sound. Right. You're not going to have any problems with it. So now you kind of shake it off, it'll light up every single time. Oh no, these are totally made for the field. They fit in pocket in any case you got. You know you have extra memory if you need it or somewhere to secure it after you've done it. And if you're outside, 
outside, whatever. Everything's getting more and more weather sealed, so why wouldn't our memory, right? For sure. The best thing about this one, um, also IP67, so you can dunk this one in water too, but the connector here is a whole new ball game okay. for SSD. So this is NVMe, Firecuda is inside of this one as well. Uh, Thunderbolt 3, giving you 2800 megabytes per second, but the best thing about this, the first to market, this product will actually work with USB-C connection as well. Okay. It's the only SSD out there that's Thunderbolt 3 that it doesn't matter what computer that you plug it into, it'll it still light up. Right. Um, again, universal compatibility, our Lissy products, it's one of our number pro number one promises, is all about that compatibility across multiple devices because you don't know necessarily what's on set or what it's going to connect to down the road. Or who you're handing it to. Exactly. So this definitely gives you that peace of mind. Yeah. Um, the other thing with peace of mind uh, for both of these products is that if they come with a five-year warranty okay. as well as our data rescue services. So if you do end up having a problem, we know accidents happen, we can help recover your data for as long as the extent of the year of the warranty and that comes free with all of our SSD products. So they're solid state but capacities? Capacities, great question. Um, so this one which is available starting next week actually, nice. um, 500 gig up to two terabytes okay. and then this one starts at one terabyte as we also offer two terabytes and this one's available middle of October. So aside from these you also have one other thing that just came out, it's pretty exciting, it's called the Boss. Correct. Okay. So we have our new Rugged Boss SSD. So this product here, we actually like to call it the 8-in-1. Eight eight one. <laughs> it's a pretty, um, it sounds like kind of a crazy complicated product, but ultimately it serves two great use cases. Okay. One is, you guys are out here shooting right now, right? You got a team of three, you don't need a MacBook or a PC or anything, and you can copy, you can take that card straight out, put it into here, and you push this button and there's a screen on top. The and screen it's is sexy, by the way, that is sexy. That is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so this one here will tell you exactly um, what's copy, push the button, say yes, let's copy. Um, the reason why we call, we have so many different modes, right? So whether it be an SD card slot or you want to put in your camera, any USB device, right. um, you can copy directly and ingest directly from without the use of a computer. Right. The other great use case for this is as of right now, my phone is literally being charged with this. So the so, battery on board can also so output as a as a power bank. Uh, yep, exactly. It's a power bank and a hub. So this thing has a you know what I call the brains inside. So there's actually a processor inside plus a battery plus okay. the SSD. This is a one terabyte SSD here. Okay. Um. So yeah, you can use it with anything. And then the other best part is yeah. it comes with a app. Yeah. So you plug in your app. You can view all your files in real time. So as you can see here, you can look at you know what is actually on this product. You also have what's on the, there's an SD card, or you can look at the photos that's actually on your phone. So transfer back and forth. You can have three copies very easily. Plug in a drive here off the USB. You have your SD card, plus you have what's on the actual Boss product. So now you have three copies without the use of any PC or Mac. Plus you're not blind. So you're not just like putting in there and yes. praying that that screen was correct. You can actually double check it. You can, there's checks. So there's a verification mode on the app. So you can do a checksum verification. You can also, you filming, put the SD card in there, copy some of it, keep filling, put it back in, and you'll have an incremental backup so it won't copy the whole thing again. It only copies the new stuff. It'll help organize your folder, folders as a timeline view as well. It's also great because you can get if you can get it from here to a mobile device, that means you can share a proof of concept while you're on set to 100%. somebody that's off-site. That's a big, big deal. Yep. And, and of course, it's rugged as well, same as we got here, right? Yes, exactly. Um, this one doesn't have the IP67 rating, so okay. that's a, a big difference here. Um, but it is dust proof, it comes with a cap, so it is uh, water resistant okay. as well as dust resistant and it does have a cap. Um, but this product here, filming in 4K, doesn't matter. You can literally look at your raw video and scrub back and forth and see exactly what you've captured and be like, nope, I gotta redo that. All right. So it's a really good way to back up, view, as well as you can use it as a hub, charge your stuff. And it was actually pretty smart that you did it by a cable, not wireless, because anywhere you go, there might be some sort of interference. Correct. You probably don't get the connection. What if you're transferring files and it doesn't keep the connection, it drops, and you have half files, and who knows what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So you kept it pretty stable with the cable, very smart. Of course, you're always thinking, let's see. 
Let's see. That's awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, it actually comes with all the different cables that you need, so you don't have to buy extra cables. It comes with Android base as well as iOS. Okay. Um, or i device, I should say. It comes with a USB 3 cable, USB C cable. It also comes with an ad uh, adapter for the SD cards. Uh, so all in one in one box. And this one will be available uh, end of September, probably first week of October. So we're going into 2020, yeah. like ready to rock, right? Ready to rock. This is pretty impressive. I'm psyched on these. I mean, they're so fast, you can probably tether directly to them. It's insane. So nicely done. Thank you. Thank <laughs> and you. It was great talking to you. Enjoy the rest of your show. All right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much.